Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we're going to be calculating some reactions here. And this will be our 20th part in this particular series. So what we have going on here is that we have a light bar AD that is suspended from this cable BE as shown and supports a 20 kilogram block here at C. The extremities of A and D of the bar are in contact with a frictionless vertical walls as shown. So we have to determine the tension in the cable BE, and we also have to determine our reactions here at D and at A. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and let's just draw a free body diagram here just to see what we have going on. So there's my bar. So this would be my point A, this would be my point B, this would be C, and then up here would be D. So at B, I'm going to have a cable tension force. The cable is vertical, so my force will be vertical. I'm just gonna call that T. At C, I have my 20 kilogram weight. So let's go ahead and let's calculate what that would be in Newtons. So 20 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, and we get a total of 196.2 newtons of force in the downward direction. So then we are also going to have reactions at A and D. So since this is frictionless, this contact between the end of the bar and the wall is frictionless, that means that we are not going to have any type of vertical reaction. It is smooth, so it is allowed to slide up and down here. So we are not going to have anything in the vertical direction for our reactions. This is essentially going to be like a roller. So we are only going to have reactions in the horizontal direction here provided by the wall at each location where it contacts. And that reaction has to be pointed <clears throat> towards the bar on each side here because the bar is going to push on the wall and the wall is going to react and push back in the opposite direction. The wall, for instance, cannot have a reaction in this direction. That means if that were to happen, that means the bar would be pushing away or trying to go away, pulling away from the wall, and the wall would be grabbing it and pulling it back. That is not happening here. So the only way the reactions here at D and A can be is that the wall is reacting and pushing back at them. So our reactions here, we would have A sub X in this direction and then D sub X in this direction. So we are tasked with finding our tension force T and then D sub X and A sub X, which are our reactions here. And then we can also have our dimensions here, which I shouldn't scroll too far up because we're gonna need those dimensions. So. What's the easiest way to start here? Well, let's go ahead and let some forces in the Y direction to get our tension here. Because the tension force is the only unknown in the Y direction, so this should be pretty simplistic to write the equation. We would have our tension force we're taking up as positive, so positive T minus off that weight of 192 or 196.2 Newtons equal to zero. Therefore, our tension force in our cable is 196 0.2 newtons in that upward direction. So that would be our tension force, and that's already one of the things that we are asked to do. So let's work on getting our reactions A sub X and D sub X. So <clears throat> we can't just sum forces in the X direction because A sub X and D sub X are the only ones in the X. So really can't solve anything that way. But what we can do is we can use our third equation of equilibrium, which is summing moments about a point. So let's sum moments about A down here. So when we sum moments about A, which is one of our reaction points, D sub X will be our only unknown in that equation because A sub X goes right through A and it drops out of our moment equation. So we are only left with finding D sub X. So that would be our next point, which if we sum moments about point A equal to zero, we take counterclockwise as a positive moment direction. What do we have here? Well, let's go ahead and Let's take, let's just throw on some dimensions real quick. That way I don't have to be scrolling up to the picture each time. So this is 125 millimeters. This will be 75 millimeters. And then this over here will be 175 millimeters. And then our vertical distance here is 200 millimeters. So now I really don't need that picture up there. 
All right. So let's start with our tension force here. It will be rotating counterclockwise about A. So it would be a positive 196.2 newtons times its perpendicular distance, which is 125 millimeters to get it over to A. And then our next force will be the other 196.2 newtons times its perpendicular distance to get it over to A, which is 200 millimeters. This one will be rotating clockwise about A, so it'll be negative based upon our positive sign convention. And then lastly, we have our horizontal reaction of D sub X, which will be rotating counterclockwise about A, so it'll be plus D sub X times its perpendicular distance, which is 200 millimeters to get it down to A. And that's all we would have in our moment equation. And D sub X is our only unknown here. So then D sub X, we can rearrange and solve, and it will be 73.6 Newtons rounded to the nearest point there and that would be acting to the left. So we only have one more reaction to determine, that's A sub X. So what we can do is that we can just sum forces in the X direction. And as you can see, A sub X and D sub X are gonna be equal to each other, but in the opposite direction. So we had A sub X minus off 73.6 Newton from D sub X equal to zero. And A sub X is just going to be the same as D sub X, just in the opposite direction here, acting to the right. And that's how you would solve this particular problem. Now, with most reaction problems, what you can do is you can double check your answers. This one's a little simplistic, but in more complicated reaction problems, it does, it does help to uh, make sure you have that double check. So let's go ahead and let's just check our answers here. And usually what you do with the check is that you just sum moments about a different point that you did in the beginning. So instead of summing moments about A, I'm just gonna sum moments about D and have it all be in equilibrium still. So what we would have here is that we would have 196.2 Newtons. Oh, let me get the drag there. So what I'm doing here is I'm going from right to left. So I'm going to be gathering up points like this. So we would have our first one of 196.2 Newtons times its distance of 175 rotated counterclockwise. So it would be positive times 175 millimeters. And then we would be subtracting off the cable tension force of 196.2 Newtons times its perpendicular distance to D, which would be 250 millimeters. It is negative because it'll be rotating clockwise about point D. And then lastly, we have our reaction at A sub X. It will be rotating counterclockwise about D. So it'd be 73.6 millimeters times its vertical distance to D, which is the 200 millimeters. And does this come out to be zero? Well, it does not. It actually comes out to be five. So why is it not zero? Well, it's not zero because technically this answer up here for D sub X and A sub X, if you wanted to write it out exactly, it's 73.575 Newtons for each of these answers, but it's just rounded up to 73.6. If you were to plug this exact answer in here and all exact answers into your check equation, then it will be much, 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 much closer to zero, if not exactly zero. So the reason why this is five is just simply because this answer here was rounded off. And five overall is not that far off of zero considering your answers are close to 200 and 100. So they are much higher than your rounding value. Now, if this rounding value was like 21, 23, 24, it's getting a little bit closer to 73. But the reason why it's not zero and it is five is just simply because a little bit of rounding. So make sure that you understand that when you do your check and it doesn't come up to zero, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means you did a little bit of rounding as long as your number is small compared to your overall answers that you got in the first place. So this check in my book would be okay. And that's how you would work this particular problem. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solved this Friday, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.